Deep in the outermost regions of our solar system exists a planet that contains life. Intelligent life, in fact. This planet is called Nibiru, and its inhabitants are called the Nibiruans, a humanoid species of giants that have existed for much longer than the human race. We know them as the gods of antiquity, the gods of religions. They are technologically, physically, and spiritually advanced to a point that we as humans do not understand or comprehend in our current knowledge of all things. Life began much earlier on Nibiru than Earth. They are advanced by millions of years. Nibiru has a highly elliptical orbit around the sun and life is only sustained through its robust and thick atmosphere, fueled and replenished by volcanic activity among other geological factors that have allowed it to survive for millions of years in the darkest and coldest areas of our solar system away from the light of the sun. The story begins beyond 500,000 years ago when the gods were faced with the dilemma of fixing their failing atmosphere. Due to decreased geological activities, the thick life-giving atmosphere of Nibiru was starting to erode away into the vacuum of space, causing great troubles for the gods over time threatening their way of life, and eventually threatening the life of all the inhabitants of Nibiru. Something had to be done before all was lost. They started looking for ways to combat the threat. They searched within the planet for ways to revive the geological activities that had been sustaining life on Nibiru for eons. They also searched outside Nibiru within the confines of the solar system for ways to repair their dying atmosphere. Two solutions were proposed. First, to use nuclear weapons under the crust to boost geological activity. Second, to use outside sources found in the solar system to repair the atmosphere, mainly the element of gold, which was not found on Nibiru. Aware of the consequences of nuclear weapons, they first decided to search out gold within the solar system. Two areas that gave off the strongest signatures of the presence of gold were the asteroid belt and a smaller signature reflected from an inner system planet they called Earth. They decided to mine the gold from the asteroid belt where it was found to be abundant. Fleets were sent, but the cost was great. Many lives were lost and the majority of the fleets were destroyed while attempting to mine the ore in such chaotic conditions. With the failure of gold mining, the current king at that period, Alelu, decided to deploy nuclear weapons within the crust in a final desperate attempt to fix the problem. But his attempts were futile. The geological activities did not return to normal. The atmosphere continued to fail, and in all the increasing anxiety of the situation, his rule was challenged by a god who claimed rightful ownership to the throne through blood. The god, Anu, challenged Alelu to a public match of hand-to-hand -hand combat which would decide the fate of the throne of Nibiru. Anu and Alelu fought bravely to the finish, but in the end, Anu was the last one standing in victory. Alelu, shamed with his own defeat and weary of his imprisonment or possible sentencing to death, covertly escaped into the shadows as the masses ushered in a new era on Nibiru, crowning Anu as the new king. Alelu made his way to the cockpit of a deep space mining vessel and blasted off from Nibiru towards the sun. He set the navigation coordinates to the planet Earth, a planet found to harbor life, a planet that also gave off a small signature of the gold resource that Nibiru needed so desperately. He knew that if he could survive the journey to Earth and discover its gold, he could be the savior of Nibiru, change his fate, and reclaim the throne that he had lost.